So what up, what up, party people? Mm, 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 mm. What up? Oh my goodness, another week has been going by. It's that time again for Decky Nation. Ain't no party like a Decky Nation party. Like a Decky Nation party. Because a Decky Nation party don't stop. Oh, you feels me? Yes, I know you feel me. So, ain't much been going on. It's been a, been a pretty chill weekend. The Oscars was over the weekend. That was good. So, I have some, obviously, some some good old-fashioned from that. Um, and it's Black History Month, people. Hello. Can we give a good old... Can we give three cheers for Black History Month, please? Let's start it out. Let's just get three cheers. Three cheers. Cheers, okay, for Black History Month. So in honor of Black History Month, I thought it would be so nice for me to uh, to personalize two people in Black history and culture that really made a difference in life and especially, and so I decided to choose a artist and a writer. And the person that I wanted to talk about was Duke Ellington and Josephine St. Pierre Ruffin. I mean, what better way to say thank you than to honor and discuss two great people. We won't be discussing about them long, but I just wanted to throw some certain tips and a little bit of tips that maybe people didn't know about both of these marvelous and wonderful people. <music> So first up is we want to speak about Duke Ellington, who is uh, an American composer, okay? And he was a pianist and a leader of a jazz orchestra and starting in 1923 all the way up until the day he died, okay? That is a long time, can I tell you? Because he didn't die until... May 1974, he was 86 years old when he passed away. So he was in charge of that orchestra for from that time, from 1974, was it? I think it was uh, 1923, I'm sorry, 1923, all the way up until he passed away, which that means, and like from the information I read, it says that uh, he, for more than six decades, he held that title. For more than six decades, he held that title, which is amazing okay that is amazing duke ellington also was born in washington dc okay he was born right here in our backyard washington dc so you know that's great and then he but he died and which is crazy he died in new york city so i didn't know this um but he is part of our my history as far as checking way back as far as so he's part of our, my bloodline which is awesome so it feels good to I mean, I don't really have an instrument gene in my body. I wish I did, but I don't. So that's just a couple fun facts about Duke Ellington. Now we're going to just move on to Miss Josephine. So Josephine St. Pierre Ruffin. Okay, that's a lot to say. She was American publisher. She was an activist. If I'm not mistaken, she was a journalist and she was a civil rights leader, which is Come on now, that's dope. She was a civil rights leader. She and she was the first one of the first women to. I'm sorry, I'm reading it. Like I'm, there's things I have written down here, so I'm trying to like tell you the facts that I found out, which was pretty cool. She was an editor of the Woman's Era, um, first national newspaper published and published by an American woman and who was African American. So a black African American woman was the first person to publish at this specific place which is a big step for black women everywhere and especially black writers everywhere uh she was born august 31st 1842 she died uh march 13 1924 so she lived a pretty happy life she was 82 when she passed away um yeah she oh and she went to harvard grad school so which is awesome so she really was an educated strong black woman so once again, that was Josephine St. Pierre Ruffin. And that's just my little fun facts for you for Black History Month. Thank you.
So Daki Nation is the nation of all nations because we talk about the fashion. Fashion is what we talk about on Daki Nation. I mean, every now and again, I might want to throw out a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but fashion is our main and focus and priority. And what better way to do fashion but then with a hit and miss, okay? Okay, so the Oscars had a lot of fashion, a lot, a lot of fashion going on. So we just going to start off and right out the bark saying like it was a lot of, for the men, it was a lot of the same thing. They all look exactly the same. They all came, most of them came in black suits, which was kind of hard picking my hit and miss for the men segment, for the men in this category. But the women came, some came dressed to slay the gods and some came dressed to slay, I don't really know who the hell you thought you were slaying. So let's just jump right on in. Kristen Wiig, Kristen Wiig is going to be our first person in the hit or miss category oh my gosh so for those who don't know her she plays in ghostbusters she's one of the first female ghostbusters she plays and if i'm not mistaken bridesmaids and a bunch of other stuff okay um so here she is in the valentino um the dress i'm not here for i don't like it um I, it really does look like she's a fish in a dress um not really here for it um i'm just I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I think she just looks, I mean, like this is something I feel like if you wanted to go to a fancy ass dinner party, then maybe I might wear this. But as far as going to the Oscars, I probably wouldn't wear it. I just don't like it. It just looks weird. I think it looks literally like a, a jellyfish from the bottom coming up. So to me, this is a, a miss. Sorry, Kristen, it's a miss for me. All right, so for those who don't know, once again, I always look over here a lot of the times because this is where my screen is at when you guys are looking at the screen. When you look at the picture on my screen, I'm looking at that picture through another screen. Okay, boo yow. So right up, up, we got Billy Porter. And to me, Billy Porter, once again, slayed for the gods. I feel like he always comes through with the come through when it comes to with these looks, okay? Every look to me, he always slays. And this one is no different. I feel like the chest piece, the top part, the torso, love the ruffles, love the feather, um, feather part about it. Love the bottom piece, how it looks kind of tribal and just like ready for action kind of thing. And I love the pump. Okay, who doesn't like another pump? And this is also by, this is a couture piece, by the way. So once again, to me, Billy Porter, you slated. This is definitely a hit. Go off. I am obsessed with you. I love you. You cannot do no wrong. Boom. Okay, so now moving on to Miss Black China, honey. So I was ready to mean someone was like, um, why is Black China there? She don't play in no movies. I mean, first of all, if you want to show up and show out, then you can very well do so. So, and that's exactly what she did with this piece, okay? Because she looks amazing. Everything about this piece looks amazing. The shoulder pads, how she got the shoulder detail on the thing looks amazing. The cuffs on the arm look amazing. The slit at the right place with the leg, the titties hanging just right. The hair was just flowing. Everything about this piece from her is bomb. It's a Donna Matoshi, I'm a po I'll, you know, you know how I'll do. Um, but it was, she looks gorgeous. She looks gorgeous. Um, I like how her eyes give her that because, you know, the China, you always think of like a China doll. So to me, she hit it out the park. This is definitely a hit. Go off Miss Black China. Okay. I love it. I love it. I love it. So moving on. So now we have Timothy Chalamet. Um, he plays in movies like Lady Bird, Call Me By Your Name, um, The King on Netflix. So he has been out for a little bit. So he got a, a bunch of the list of movies that he probably was in, but I just don't have time to name them all. Um, okay, so I think he looks amazing. I think he looks great. I love this subtlety where it's like, it can almost be comfortable, but it still gives the right illusion that, yes, this is the Grammys and I still put myself together kind of vibe. It gives me like real rich, um, which I mean, I know he has money, but it gives me like real rich um, in my mansion, drinking my, smoking my cigar with my whiskey cup, you know what I'm saying? Waiting for my, for my, for my dudes to come over. Um, so this is a hit. I think he looks amazing. Go off. I think this is super, super dope. I love the concept of it and it's just enough for the Grammys. Thank you very much. So now we got Miss Cynthia Irby. Oh, I, I feel like I've used her quite a few times in a lot of my, um, hit or misses. Um, to me, she looks amazing. Every time I said, I think that one time the pink dress was okay. I thought it was okay. The one that she wore, but, um, this dress right here, this dress is a, 
knock out of the park. It's gorgeous. She looks gorgeous. She looks effortless. Like her skin looks flawless. She just looks like a African queen in this dress. Okay, it's a Versace piece. It just the detail, the diamonds, the just everything. And like I said before, she don't have much titty, but it always just sits perfectly well in the dresses that get made for her or that she wears. So Cynthia, this is definitely a hit once again. I didn't even have to say it. It just looks gorgeous. You always impress me, girl. Go off, girl. Go off, honey. Ow. Okay, so Anthony Ramos is our next victim. Um, I love this piece that he's wearing. I think he looks amazing. I think everything about this looks amazing. Yeah, so he's playing in that movie that's up and coming movie that's up and coming musical. Some I think it's like Welcome to Harlem or something like something of the sorts. But anyway, and I know he's played in a couple other things, but one, he's super, super handsome, by the way. He's very handsome. Very very handsome guy. Um, he has these cute little big ears, but the, anyway, the piece that he's wearing, I love, first of all, the necklace piece that he's wearing, all that. Then I like how he wore the white, you know, the white, almost look like a pianist jacket with the, um, with the shoes, with the studded shoes. First of all, he killed this to me, other than like him and Timothy, because they, they're like the only ones that really didn't wear a black suit like almost every other man that goes to the Oscars. So this is a hit straight off the bat. It looks amazing. He looks amazing. Um, go off, Timothy. I'm here for you. Boop. I can't wait to see the movie because I'm definitely going to go see it. Okay? Boop. All right. All right. Excuse me. All coming through for Miss Janelle Monet. Okay? She slated in this piece i love the hood okay love the whole gown in general the whole gown in general is just hands down flawless she looks amazing um the only thing about this dress i mean to me this is definitely a hit i think it's a hit all the way um the only thing about this dress that kind of throws me off for a curveball like the dress just looks super super stiff like if you move it's gonna break it just looks really really stiff so i hope it's not as stiff as it looks but other than that, it's still a hit. She looks flawless. There's not really much to say. This is like a super hit out the park. Boom. You know what I'm saying? Can we all give a dance party for Miss Janelle? Okay. Um, so starting with my black. Okay, we're gonna start off with Mr. Brad Pitt. Um, one, first of all, Brad Pitt. Uh, I do know he did win Best Supporting Actor. I didn't watch the Oscars. I did see the fashion, okay? It was a lot of people that had a lot of fashion. It was just so many to choose from, but I wanted to just give it down to like five guys, five girls, and call it a day. Um, so Brad Pitt looks amazing. I like the velvet jacket touch to his suit. It's not as basic as everybody else's. Um, the slick back hair, I feel like his hair looks raggedy. I feel like his hair could be fixed better. It just looks cheap and looks like it's breaking off and it looks like he's getting old. Or maybe that's just me, okay? But from my picture, it just looks weird. Um, but anyway, he looks amazing. I heard he had a good speech that he spoke about. So, um, it's a, it's a hit. But I'm just sad that it's so basic. But it is a hit because he looks super, super clean. And it's a hit because it's a velvet jacket. So go off, Brad. Charlie Theron. She always plays like, I think I'm saying her name right. I hope I'm saying it right. But um, she always plays like this wicked woman, like in movies. So she always has like this sinister side to her. But and obviously wearing this dress completely gives that illusion with like even the look in her face and how she looks. She just always gives this like, bitch i wish you would kind of vibe so i think she looks stunning um but i feel like she always comes through with a look she always gives me a nice classy stunning look so i think she looks stunning i think she looks amazing i know i'm always fixing this hat and my hair in a way which i feel like my hair just looks so sad anyway um this is a hit for me she goes off, um, this is Dior, by the way, with Tiffany Jewelry. Um, so this is definitely a hit. She looks amazing. Once again, she slayed. If that's Tiffany, that necklace piece, everything. Um, go off, Miss Thing. Okay, so we're wrapping this up with the fashion. Oh my God, I feel like it went by so fast. So last but not least, we had, we had Brad Gorowski. Um, he's a stylist and he also plays on, he uh, plays, he's also on uh, Fashion Police. So of course, 
he comes through with this Alexander McQueen piece. His piece is just, I like it. Although it's the black and white classic, it's technically not a classic because of the detailed lapel on the jacket. Everything about that jacket and that lapel is everything. So it gives it the classic look without being overly classic. You know what I mean? Just classic with an edge. So that's what I like. Like it's like new school versus old school. Combine it together, you get wow school. Okay, cause that shit is bomb. Okay, he definitely a hit. He looks amazing. Everything about this, the sleek in the shoe, the little bit of ankle peeking out. He just killed it. So go off. This is definitely a slay all day, honey. Okay, you already know it's game time. FMK, FMK. Okay, so we're gonna keep it super. I know my hair just looks crazy. So we're keeping it super, super, super quick. We're gonna do a Timothy Chalamet. Okay, we're gonna do um, Anthony Ramirez, and we're gonna do a Brad Pitt. Okay, boom, bang, boom. Got it. So if I had to choose, I'm definitely going to marry Anthony. Yeah, Mary Anthony Reynolds ASAP. I'm a, uh, ooh. It's hard because I'm gonna go ahead and fuck Brad Pitt because Brad Pitt is old school and I feel like he just knows some things and he'll be like that good daddy. So I'm gonna go ahead and fuck Brad Pitt. I'm gonna have to kill Mr. Timothy. Sorry, Timothy, because you are sexy, but Brad Pitt got that. He's very distinguished. Okay, so let's just go with that. So Anthony we marry, Brad we fucking Timothy we gotta we gotta take out the take out, I'm sorry, you gotta go. Okay, so that was them. Let's move on to the women. Ooh, the women were so hard to choose from, but we're gonna go ahead with a good old black china, okay, uh Kristen Wig, boom, and a Janelle Monet. Okay, mm, that's smooth. And if we're going to go off of that, I'm sorry, but we're definitely going to marry Miss Janelle, okay? Because she's authentic. She's she's different. I like Miss Janelle. We're going to definitely smash Miss Black China. We got to fuck Miss Black China because she's gorgeous. I mean, at the end of the day, she can still be, we can still be friends, okay? I really picture that we're friends. Miss Kristen Wiig, got to die. I'm so sorry. You're funny, girl, but you just got to go. You just can't hold up to my two black. Mm, boom, bang, boom. So once again, Mary and Janelle, fucking Black China, okay? And we're killing Miss Kristen. And that's pretty much it of FMK. Boop, and that's a wrap. So once again, thank you for watching Daki Nation. I am your host, Daki, and it has been phenomenal. Please also go subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is this one, duh, that was stupid. My Instagram, which is the Kid AC, which is be spelled over there, okay. And also my wardrobe page, which my stylist page, which is uh, Daki Nation, which would be spelled over there, okay. And just support and please share, like, love, live it. Thank you, and I'm your boy Daki, and I'll talk to you, lovely party people, later. Deuces.